Hello! Welcome once again to the JLo Artist YouTube channel. Thanks for joining me on this artistic journey. And today we'll be working with colored pencils. So you'll need your number two or HB pencil, a kneaded eraser, and some good quality colored pencil. Okay, so we've got our, our Prismacolors, our white charcoal. I suppose if you wanted to have an eraser, sometimes erasers are nice. These vinyl erasers are, are nice. Not that we're going to use it that much, but you, you never know. You never know. So it's always good to have handy. And your kneaded eraser, you might want to have that handy too. But we want to choose out about 8 or 10 colors out of this 24 set. Because you don't want to use them all. You, you start forgetting which ones you've used or you think you've used one color and it really hasn't. And so it gets confusing. So let's just choose colors right from the start. Let me tell you, uh, there's some colors that I, I just will always choose. Indigo blue is one. So indigo blue is always the, one of the first to come out. Whenever you're doing flesh tones, uh, the other one to come out is poppy red. It's kind of this orangey red color called poppy red. Yellow ochre. Well, you don't have a yellow ochre, so we're going to use goldenrod. Now, if you had a 42 set, 36, 42, 72, those are going to have yellow ochre in them. But goldenrod is the same as yellow ochre, it's just darker. So we might use a, a little bit of, of white in here. So we're going to pull the white out. So now we have our dark and our light. And another color that I really like to use, especially in flesh tones and things, is, is a purple. So you can take violet or even violet blue, either one of those. So these three are going to be our flesh tones. Then you've got purple. And um, sometimes in your flesh tones, a little magenta or a little mulberry is good. Here's a good one. This, this kind of... Um, Tuscan Red. Tuscan Red is also good in flesh tones. You can mix a little Tuscan Red with your poppy or with your um, with your golden rod. So now let's look at our scrap. Any other color there that we would use? Yeah, maybe that that really bright yellow, the Spanish yellow, the Spanish orange, and maybe a little bit of white with the Spanish orange would be okay. But we don't need peach. Why don't we need peach? Yeah, because our paper's already peach. So the first thing I want to do then is sketch this all out. When we're doing any kind of figure study, it's simple shapes. So you start out and you think, okay, how, how big do I want her head? I want her chin to be almost a third of the way down through this paper. So there's her head. Just come up and almost touch that paper top. Not quite. Now, if you go from her head to her chest, it's about the, the right size there. So there's her head, arms, chest. Arm. Nose is about right in there, and that finger pointing towards your nose. So when you do fingers, you can start out kind of stick figure like, like this, and just kind of determine where that's going to go. And as we go, we adjust anyway, but you try to get it as, as close as you can. And I'm not drawing the face in, really. I'm just, like, 
there's a little shape, there's the bottom of the nose, there's the eyebrows. And for me, that's about all I need. If you're a little um, timid, maybe a little bit about drying, you might want to put in more. This is my violet. Violet is nice because it can go any way. You can go up towards the blues and greens, you can go up towards the reds and, and oranges, and yellow will cancel it out. So since there's a lot of yellow in here, I'm anticipating the yellow that's there to kind of brown it out. I usually start around the eyes. So just very briefly, throw in the eyes. She's got long eyelashes. A little shadow that comes down from her veil. And put that in. There's the tip of her nose. I might want to just put the tip of the nose in. I'm not going to worry about the bridge of the nose. That'll take care of itself. There's a little shadow that's around the nostril. Ever so lightly, just go ahead and put some of this stuff in. And if that charcoal is getting in your way, get rid of it. Cool thing about Prismacolors is you can erase over the top of them and they're going to stay there. Just put in the shapes, the darks and lights that you, you can see. Like her chin, some of that chin is really light and would get lost. So why put it in? Just put in the part you can you can see. When in doubt, leave it out. If if you think, ah, I don't really see that very well, don't put it in. You can always come back in later. And you don't have to start where I start. You can start wherever you want to. If you don't know what's going on in like the jewelry and things like that, because there's she's got a ton of stuff on there, just do the little shapes of dark and light. When you're all done, then maybe you'll look at it and go, oh, I get it. That's that's a chain or that's part of her ear or whatever. 
can't tell you how many times I've drawn something that I had no idea what I was drawing. And it doesn't matter, because you're just doing shapes of dark and light. Now some of that charcoal might get in my way, so I'm going to get rid of that. Some people like to start with the light areas. And when you're doing it on grounded board like this, you could definitely start with the light areas rather than go directly to the dark. So it's kind of up to you. I, I kind of tend to do both. So notice I didn't do the top part of the finger. I mean, there's there's a little bit of light there anyway from the charcoal. I'll just leave that out. I'm just doing the shadows with this purple. Don't think about it as a finger. It's just shapes of dark and light. So a lot of this stuff, I have no idea what it is. I'm just going to draw the little darks and lights and hopefully it works out. Goodness, there's so much stuff in here. So, when you're ready, get rid of my charcoal. I'm going to come in with my white prisma, put some of those lights back in there. Now, interestingly enough, you can erase prisma colors to a certain point. But when you grind it into the surface, always going to be a little bit there. So I'm going to take white, and if I if I have to cover the white, I can. But if I have to erase it, it'll always come back to the lightest color, the first color you layer down in. So I'm just going to take some of this white and put it in the highlight areas, the lightest areas. The other color I really like to use is called cream. And again, cream does not is not included in this set. But it comes in your 48, your 72 sets. So I'm just looking at the lightest areas now and putting this white into the lightest areas. They're my, my highlight areas. And they will help me to define my form as well.
And until you've done this, you really don't realize how, how important those light areas are. Once you do this, and you're like, wow, those, that really made a difference. Also, it, it kind of goes in people's minds that an artist has as much time as they have and they can work on it forever. But that's not true. You guys know that. It's like you, you say, I've got an hour and this is how much I can get done in that hour. And you get as much done as you can and then you're done. So see how that white starts to make a big difference? And the cool thing is, is the white, if, if it's not quite right, you can adjust it. And you can go over the top of it later on. I'm going to do a little bit of magenta. I'm going to start with her lips because her lips are very magenta. Now yeah, come back into that with some indigo blue and really darken in some of those areas, but the flesh tones, some of those shadows, a little magenta work out there. And the magenta on the salmon will will turn out kind of a reddish purpley kind of a color. It'll be a great transition color. Where it's salmon though, where where your picture looks kind of salmony peachy. Just leave the paper showing through. A little bit of that golden rod. You can even cover up some of that, uh, that white with the golden rod. If you think to yourself, oh, it looks a little more yellow, you can do that. goldenrod over the magenta will turn it a little more red. And the key to all this is layering in your colors. You're never going to come up with the right color right from the start. Yeah, layer it in. Let's see if this this poppy red, lovely, lovely color. Especially where the blood vessels are closest to the surface, like in the nose, around the ears. There are spots that you could use just plain old poppy red. Now that you've got the basics, you can say, well, I am ready for this to pop. So I'm going to take the indigo blue. I'm going to do all the really dark areas indigo blue. 
eyebrows, hair, eyelashes, This is indigo blue, and even though it, it almost looks black, it's not black. You can use it over the red, you can use it over the yellow, anywhere that you think it needs to go darker. Like I say, I actually prefer dark purple sometimes. The indigo blue with the dark purple is amazing. So just that little bit of dark really, really sets it off. Don't need a ton. So you need both the lights and the darks. Last thing I want to do in there is if I need to darken in my shadows, we do it with purple. So a little bit of this purple over the top of the red, over the top of the indigo blue, and even over the top of some of that goldenrod, because the red or the goldenrod will pick up that purple and turn it kind of brown. Kind of a red brown. What's most important here is value, not so much color. If your white looks too pasty, use a little bit of yellow over that. A kind of goldeny yellow. Sometimes your whites can get kind of pasty looking. This is why I like the cream, because cream is light, light, light yellow. It almost looks white, but it's not. Also, the more you layer over it, the more color you stick into it, the smoother your colors look. So this is that, um, that yellow over the top of the magenta which is over the top of the purple kind of gives it that warm brownish red you ought to try this this uh, Spanish orange over the top of some purple I'm just gonna here's the purple I'm just gonna lay that into like where her head is Try some of that Spanish orange into it. See what happens. Tones it right down, makes it kind of a brownish color. You can use a little bit of magenta over that. You can use a little bit of that Tuscan red over that. Oh, I like that Tuscan red. I'm going to put that into some of those flesh tones. This is that Tuscan red. 
just over the top of all those other colors and it just it brings out the reddish tones and kind of nice. You'd never know that you use purple in there and yellow. It almost looks like you use brown. But if you would use brown, it would look kind of muddy. So just keep layering in those colors. And sometimes you never know what you're going to get until you just start doing it. And you think, well, I like that color. Or, gee, I don't like that color. I'm not going to do that anymore. It's an experiment. And every drawing is different. But if you know what your colors are and how they react to each other, you can almost guess what's going to happen. I really like this Tuscan red. The farther you get away from the face, the more spontaneous you can be. Because the face is the area of emphasis. Everybody's got to make sure that, that face is just right. Once you do that, you can fudge a little bit. Don't be afraid to leave some of that color of the board just showing through, too. If it looks kind of dead and pasty, try a little bit of yellow. If you have yellow ochre, use the yellow ochre. If not, Try the golden rod. Since her outfit is very yellow, I'm going to just go through this with this golden rod. Try to get a lot of that yellow in there. You can always add black to it too if you want. If you think, ah, that's not quite as dark as I wanted it, you can add black. Sometimes it's fun to just do without the black, keep adding colors. doing it with just a few pencils. It's called a limited palette. From those few pencils, look how much 
color we can get out of that. Like I say, every picture is a little different. I have no idea what all this stuff is around her bodice, but it doesn't matter. Just throwing in colors and shapes and Wow, there's a lot of stuff in there. Just scribble it in. Nobody cares if it's beads or if it's, you know, what it is. I don't know. Maybe you do. Do you care? So we're really just hurrying through this. There's just so much information, so much stuff in here. We could spend hours more on this. But this was a good start. And hopefully you understand the fact that value, lightness and darkness is more important than color. You can you can have I mean, we could have all done this in greens and, and purples and Still been okay as long as our values were correct. Thanks for joining me on this little little project here. Remember to sign it. Also remember, art makes life better.